Ships are incredible machines that serve a number of purposes. Some of the biggest ships are cargo vessels made to transport the world's goods from one country to another. Then you have warships, such as battleships and aircraft carriers, which have an entirely different purpose. One thing they all have in common is size. None of these vessels are small, which makes maneuvering them all the more difficult. More often than not, there isn't much to worry about, considering they operate out in the middle of the ocean. But in the rare case that you have to move quickly, there isn't much you can do. And a collision at sea is the last thing you want to deal with. From tensions between countries to accidents that could have been avoided, here are five ships that got way too close. This is the incident that happened only a few months before the Russian close encounter with the USS Farragut. The USS Chancellorsville is a guided missile cruiser that was operating somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. The actual location has been disputed, with Americans claiming to be in the area of the Philippine Sea and Russians claiming to be near the East China Sea. As the American ship was conducting routine operations in the area, it was approached by the Russian destroyer, the Admiral Vinogradov. The Russian destroyer took a course that led it directly on a collision course with the Chancellorsville. Video footage taken shows that the Russian destroyer came within 100 feet of the American ship, prompting evasive maneuvers as to avoid a collision altogether. Both sides have blamed the other for the incident. Russians claim that the Chancellorsville suddenly changed course to cross the path of the Vinogradov. However, an examination of the video by retired U.S. Navy Captain Carl Schuster concluded that, by analyzing the wake of both ships, the Russian ship didn't adhere to the rules of the road. This was close to being a catastrophic collision, and it is still not known why the two ships came dangerously close to each other. The USS Farragut, named after Admiral David Farragut, is an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer for the United States Navy. For the majority of 2010, it served as the flagship of Combined Task Force 151, which is comprised of multiple countries, to disrupt and engage piracy in the Gulf of Aden and off the eastern coast of Somalia. On January 9, 2020, while conducting routine operations in the North Arabian Sea, the Farragut was approached by the Russian Navy ship Ivan Kurz. It was a surveillance ship that was operating in the area. It approached the American destroyer from the aft in a very aggressive manner. Upon seeing the approach, the Farragut sounded five short blasts, which is the international maritime signal for danger of a collision. In accordance to the international rules of the road concerning maritime safety, the Russian ship changed course after initially refusing to do so. The incident follows an earlier June encounter with a Russian destroyer in which it came within 100 feet of another U.S. ship. It is not known if the two incidents are related or if this was just an example of a navy flexing its muscles, but in the end, it was clearly a dangerous and unnecessary event. From time to time, naval ships of different countries run drills that can often run close to the territorial waters of another country. Every once in a while, as ships travel from place to place, they have no choice but to enter the waters owned by other countries. So, an international concept of law known as innocent passage was adopted. This allows for a vessel to pass through the archipelagos and territorial waters of another country. Unfortunately, this understanding has different interpretations depending on which country is involved. On February 12th of 1988, two U.S. warships, the USS Yorktown and the USS Karen, conducted an innocent passage in the Black Sea near the Soviet coast. They were doing a training mission and at the time had much of their armament pointed in the direction of the coastline. However, with the Yorktown 10 miles off the coast and the Karen 7.5 miles off, they assumed that it would be a routine mission. While the Soviet Union recognized the right of innocent passage for ships through its waters, the Soviets had their own interpretation. They would only recognize warships that traveled in designated sea lanes. The American ships were not in these lanes. So, the Soviet Navy deployed two ships to intercept the Yorktown and the Karen. The first encounter saw the Soviet frigate SKR-6 approach the Karen, and three minutes later, the Yorktown was approached by the frigate Bezovetny. As soon as the ships grazed the edge of the territorial waters, they were both bumped by the Soviets. 
neither ship sustained major damage. The Karen only received some scraping of its paint, while the Yorktown sustained some damage to harpoon missile canisters. Luckily, there were no injuries. Although our previous entries all deal with the Russian Navy, they aren't the only country that provoke U.S. Navy ships. For the last decade or two, the relationship between the United States and Iran has been rocky at best. This has especially been true when it comes to naval movement within the Persian Gulf. As this is an extremely high traffic area for ships carrying oil all over the world, the United States has made it a priority to keep the harassment of commercial ships to a minimum. But Iran hasn't exactly made it easier for them. In 2017, the USS Thunderbolt, an American patrol ship, was taking part in an exercise with American and other coalition vessels in international waters. Out of nowhere, an Iranian patrol boat started to make a very fast approach. The Iranian ship did not respond to radio calls, horn blasts, or even flares. After coming within 150 yards, the crew of the Thunderbolt were left with no choice but to fire warning shots at the vessel. This Iranian vessel was actually under the control of the Iranian Paramilitary Revolutionary Guard. Acting as a separate entity from Iran's national military, they answer only to the country's leader. Additionally, this was far from an isolated incident. In 2016, the U.S. Navy recorded 35 instances of unsafe or unprofessional interactions with Iranian forces. This is up from 23 instances the previous year. Nearly all of these incidents were with the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. On June 17, 2017, the U.S. naval vessel the USS Fitzgerald was conducting a secret mission in the South China Sea. Also in the area was a commercial Philippine-flagged container ship. At some point, the Fitzgerald crossed into the shipping lane of the container ship and was struck. As the container ship was more than three times the size of the naval ship, the impact was devastating. The gash left in the side of the ship was larger than a semi-truck. Water rushed into some of the berthing compartments, the crew bunks, taking the lives of seven sailors. The U.S. Navy conducted an investigation that led to criminal charges being leveled against a commander and a lieutenant for what it said was an avoidable accident. They determined that this accident was the result of leadership failures, inexperience, poor judgment, lack of preparation, and fatigue. Investigators found that crew members even lacked a basic understanding of how to drive a ship. The whole situation led to a complete overhaul of Navy training procedures and policies. The charges against the commander and lieutenant, however, were later dropped. Previous to the investigation, they both had been relieved of duty. Additionally, they both received letters of censure. While these letters don't hold any legal standing, they are used to highlight their faults in a public forum. This decision also reflects the Navy's findings that training and procedure needed to change. Sadly, this change came at the cost of seven sailors. As we have seen, collisions with ships can have deadly results. Whether it's a country's navy testing the resolve of another country's navy, or simply an accident between two oblivious vessels, the potential for bad things always seems to be right around the corner. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to click the link on screen now to check out another. With that, we'll catch you all in the next one.